Hello, I'm Emmanuel Tov, J.L. Magnus Professor in Biblical Studies at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Dr. Emmanuel Tov, Emmanuel, welcome back to Exegetically Speaking here. Uh, we're sitting together in the Lanier Theological Library. It's delightful to see you and to have you here studying. Welcome. Thank you very much. I continue thinking about the issue of the importance of studying ancient scripture in the original languages. I've been doing this my whole life, and I cannot imagine uh, doing otherwise. And I'm thinking about what would be the best examples in order to uh, make my point. So I'm now presenting to you a certain example where I will uh, involve both Hebrew and Greek texts uh, that should uh, require us to know more about uh, the meaning of the Hebrew and the Greek words. Uh, I say to myself, I'm not sure that I will even find solutions. Mm. And uh, this is part of my scholarly life that uh, we only start asking the questions, and we don't always find the answers. The, the, the issue is uh, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, a verse that everyone knows. And everyone knows the quotation in the New Testament. But I will uh, limit myself to uh, the Hebrew Bible and uh, the Greek Septuagint. Mm -hmm. And in the Hebrew, it is Lachen yiten Adonai hu lachem ot hine ha'alma hara ve'yoledet ben ve'karat shmo Immanuel, which happens to be also my own name. I started to say, that's your name. <laughs> <laughs> you remind us that God is with us, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, this is, I don't know whether it is an ancient crux, but... Uh, this is a verse about which so much has been has been written, and uh, basically, it uh, this is uh, the description of the future Messiah, and the question uh, that is, what is the nature of this Alma? Mm. Uh, so the question is, what is this Alma? And uh, what is the Greek translation? Because in Greek, uh, she is called Hepartenos. Uh, we mm. usually translate Alma uh, as a young girl and Parthenos as a uh, virgin. Now I go to uh, the uh, English translations that I have in front of me on my screen in the accordance program. I have two in front of me. I could show to myself 20, mm. but I take two maybe representative ones. The old uh, King James, which, which has, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. We all know that uh, by writing here virgin, the King James does not exactly translate the Hebrew word alma, but it is influenced by the New Testament or influenced by the Septuagint. Hmm. This is unusual because the King James normally adheres to the Hebrew. And so this is the King James, and next to it, I have the NRSV, does not have a virgin, but it has, look, the young woman is with child. So what is going on here? We basically have to do investigations about 
uh, what is the meaning of the word Alma? As I just said, Alma, can I extend the meaning of the word Alma to other meanings, including virgin? Can I extend the word Parthenos to other meanings, including that of a young lady? And I cannot solve this issue uh, within a short uh, speech because there is hardly any solution to it. But I have done some investigations of the Septuagint, mm -hmm. and I, uh, these investigations have brought me to... Uh, I don't know whether uh, other people have, have done the same, but they have brought me to the story of Rebecca in Genesis mm -hmm. 24. Abraham sends his servant far away to Mesopotamia to find a match for his son Isaac. And he says, the first girl that you will find at the well, she will be, uh, because I want, I want my son to, to marry a girl from the land where I come from, she will be the girl for my son. And there he says, in, in uh, verse 14, 24, 14, Vineha Naara, Naara, which is a young girl. Mm. And in the Septuagint, Kai Estai He Parthenos. So Parthenos is, there, huh? Parthenos, virgin. also virgin. Huh, huh. And then you come to verse 16, and there you also have Naara uh, uh, Parthenos. So it's not a mistake. So this, so this is a translation in the book of Genesis, the very beginning of the translation enterprise. Mm. Now, what does this mean? Does this mean this translator, for this translator, a girl can be a virgin? Or can we say this translator had a free exegesis and he said well this girl that is going to be married to the son of Abraham well of course she had to be a virgin so let me translate with a free translation Parthenos mm. I give this in my own name uh, without involving anyone as a free parallel to what I think is happening in the book of Isaiah mm. as a free thought. Now, you don't have to accept this. <laughs> I see here that because it, it will make a change maybe for religions. I see here a translator. So there's one way in which we, if you, if you follow a religious interpretation you say well this is all destined uh, this is all programmed and uh, the meaning her parthenos uh, has a very important background and it has to be explained as it is explained in the new testament mm. another way if you follow immanuel tov you may say well maybe the translator did not have a special, so this is the Greek translator, did not have a special ex to grind. And he, he may have thought, Hine ha'alma hara, behold, the girl was a pregnant. Well, the girl, before she was pregnant, she was still a virgin. And maybe in a free translation, Similar to what we, what we see in Genesis, I might as well make this girl to a Parthenos. This is a long shot, and I may be right, I may be wrong. In any event, the point I want to make, and you can all discuss this, <laughs> in any event, the point I want to make is you need to solve this issue not on the basis of 
English translations, but by further investigating the meaning of these words. Mind you, in other Greek translations, the so-called three translators, they don't have in Isaiah Parthenos, but they have a word neanis, which means young lady. I say again, with all uh, modesty and in all humbleness, I may be right, I may be wrong. Uh, but it's the beginning of, a, of an investigation. Well, I want to I find out what the end of the investigation is one of these days into this fascinating text. Dr. Emmanuel Tove, thank you for being with us today. Talk about Isaiah 7, 14 on Exegetically Speaking. We are so grateful to Emmanuel Tove for being with us today on Exegetically Speaking. What an honor to have him with us. If you missed his first podcast with us on Genesis 1-1, be sure to go back and listen to that. Thanks to Phil Keggy for our music. Thanks to John Lonsma, Ian Rosine, and Rebecca Larson for helping us produce this podcast for the Lanier Theological Library and Wheaton College. In the show notes, you can find out more about how you can get started studying biblical languages at Wheaton College. We hope you will. It is, it is the right place to be. There's nothing quite like it. There is no substitute for reading in the original languages. Until next time, I'm David Capes. Thanks for listening.